thank you for this opportunity where I'm able to listen to such amaz amazing life-changing stories. I mean, truly, hats off to you. Okay, at the outset, I'd like a show of hands for people who've seen Chitrahar and Saptahiki. Wow, I don't feel so old now. Show of hands for people who have seen community free viewing of a Hindi movie during the Ganpati festival. Not so many. Okay, I was a privileged one then because it was a lot of fun. Well, less was more then. And more doesn't seem to be enough now. We're spoiled for choice. Entertainment today is available at the click of a button in the comfort of your homes at your convenience. Shopping, you can actually, I mean, how many of us at my age and our teenage years could fathom that we would see a time when you could actually just sit at your home, click a button, shop, and have things delivered to your doorstep? I think that would be something out of a James Bond movie or something like this, very, very futuristic. But we're actually seeing it now. 3D printing of human organs, 3D printed homes, in two days, you can actually print a home and at very affordable prices. The whole story of the Internet of Things, where you can run your home from your phone, you can actually manage your washing machine, your refrigerator, your lights, so on and so forth. There is so much of everything. It's mind-boggling, actually. And I think the question in everyone's mind today is what next? The future has never been more intriguing than it is today. And I think we truly are at an intersection of things. But mind you, every cause has an effect. And the effect of all the advancement in technology, all the substitutes of the things that exist today, if not looked at end to end, if not looked at in its entirety, will herald us towards a world which will not be conducive to a healthy way of life. And I think we're almost there now to talk about the recent ban on plastic. When plastic came into being, we only had glass and clay, which were the materials available for molding, but they were very heavily heavy, they were brittle, and so plastic came into being with all the qualities of being light, reusable, remoldable, waterproof. They Plastic actually is an amazing material, and even Sadhguru has so many videos in which he talks about the qualities of plastic. But it has been shamed out of our lives, banned out of our lives, by calling it the demon which is causing all the environmental hazards. Is that really so? Is it the plastic, or is it our inability to manage the huge waste that it creates? India alone creates 13,500 tons of waste of plastic every single day, and the Western countries create even more. So can you imagine the kind of waste that we have, and we don't even have a proper disposal system? So what I'm basically saying is, we need to look at a product in its entirety. You need to look at end to end. We're very happy to climb any bandwagon that is offered to us. Cut now to the present, juuling and vaping. I'm sure most of you all know what it is. For the ones who don't, I advise that you Google it later. This has been marketed to the youth of today as a safer alternative to smoking. We were faced with a smoking epidemic. Now we have a vaping epidemic. I would like to tell you, this vaping uses a vaporizer which has a battery that runs it. This battery is made of lithium. Now, there are no instructions with the instrument to tell you how to safely dispose this so that it doesn't end up in landfills where the chemical from the battery is going to leach into the soil, into the underwater, destroy the ecosystem, besides being a huge health hazard. It causes an ailment which has been nicknamed as popcorn lungs, which basically means that the bronchioles of your lungs are going to be irreversibly and permanently damaged. But we're happy to climb on to the bandwagon of vaping because it's a safer alternative. Like now, the current trending electric cars. Again, everyone is all gung-ho. Okay, fine, we found the answer 
to the carbon emissions that all the petrol and diesel cars are creating out there. But is that the truth? So I have four pertinent questions for you, and we need to look at that before all of us out here say, okay, fine, we've got the answer. The first and foremost is child labor. Now, the batteries that these electric cars are going to use are going to be made of minerals such as cobalt, lithium, nickel. All of this is mined. Now, cobalt, the largest producer is Dominic Republic of Congo in Africa. It has 60% of the world's cobalt. So obviously, all the cobalt comes from there. It, it's a country which is very, very poor. So children as young as four and five years old wake up at 5 a.m. They are supposed to walk for two hours to the mines. Once they reach there, they go down a shaft without any protective gears or safety equipments. And the mouth of the shaft is also just held open with pieces of wood and they don't have any gear to go down. They tie ropes, they tie gunny bags and sacks and they're sent down there. A lot of them don't make it back because the shafts collapse. And the ones who are working outside the mines also call it a living hell. In fact, most of them get into smoking and sniffing gasoline and stuff like that because they can't get themselves to wake up every day and go to the job there. All of this for $2 a day, which doesn't even allow them two square meals let alone a bed, light, running tap water is something that is a luxury. None of them have seen it. Bathing, none of them actually, because they actually only work on that much of water. So the automobile giants were asked, have you, have you seen the supply chain of your cobalt and whether it is clean of child labor? And most of them replied in the negative. And then they said, now we will. But that is not enough. Even if that happens, have we found out that the electricity that is going to power your cars, the batteries, when you're going to charge, you're going to need electricity. So if it's not from a sustainable source, and again, if it's a fossil fuel like coal or something, are you really going to call this car a greener car? No, you can't. And that brings us to another question. Now, every unit of this electric car in its production also causes carbon emissions, right? When you're mining it, you're sending it to factories where it's going to be produced. Then the entire production cycle of that one unit of car also causes carbon emissions. So whilst it's on the road, it doesn't cause carbon emissions. But to offset what has already happened, it needs to run for 1,25,000 kilometers. Only then will it be able to equalize the carbon emissions that it created in its production. And most of us, We'll have replaced our cars by then. Nobody uses it for so long. So again, it's not your green car. And last but not the least, we come back to the question of waste management. Now, it's proposed that by 2030, every car on the road is going to be an electric car. Can you imagine the kind of old batteries in terms of waste that we're going to be dealing with? Have we actually factored in for that? Have we thought of the product cycle again end to end? In India, at least, I know that the recycling and repurposing processes, which are the system of managing waste, is not going to happen because recycling by battery is a very expensive proposition. Anything, any product that you're going to make out of recycling or battery is going to charge you five times the cost as opposed to when you're making the product with a virgin cobalt or a virgin nickel. I don't think something that cost me 10, I'll pay 50. Or maybe there might be a small section who's very conscientious. A lot of them are present here today, I guess. But most Indians will not be doing that. Repurposing then seems to be like the way out, which basically means that a battery may not be strong enough to charge an electric car, but it can be used to charge an electric bike. This battery can also run your, your uh, elevators in your building. In Japan, they are planning to use these old used batteries of cars to light up the street lights. There are many such ways that people are looking at repurposing of these batteries. But I think, in my opinion, we need to have very, very strict and stringent measures taken 
before we jump to the bandwagon of electric cars. Every battery that leaves the factory where it's created needs to come with a set of instructions on safe disposal. I think something like subsidizing or giving them a buyback would help because then it will ensure that you are given a battery only when you give your old battery back and you get some kind of a buyback on that. That might be an answer. So friends, basically, you need to look for solutions which don't become your next problem. Just like the plastic, we were all excited. We used it in so many products from morning to evening, and then we banned it. Electric cars, very excited, but then we're not going to know what to do with the batteries. You're again going to ban and invent something else. I think we need to then look at having a clean path to a green tomorrow instead of the present, which has a dark side to every clean tomorrow. Thank you.